Hi, welcome to Operations Management. This lecture is concerning forecasting. Forecasting is such an important topic that we will be taking advantage of and you will be using this concept in your career as well. First of all, let's talk about the overview of the course. We have learned about Operations Productivity, OM Strategy, Quality and Statistical Process Control Chart. Um, in today's topic, we are going to learn forecasting, and that's the um, concept that intersects the QPIC decision. Q, quality, P, process, I, inventory, and capacity. And we'll be covering that today. Um, this lecture consists of three topics. The first one is the power of forecasting, and the forecasting concepts, then forecasting methods. Um, the first two topics will be covered in this lecture, and the third topic will be covered uh, in the separate video. Look at this quote. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And it was said by Peter Drucker. Uh, Peter Drucker was the person who started the management field. He said that the best way to predict the future is to create it by envisioning what kind of person and a future or organization wants to be, we create our future together. When vision is clear, goal becomes clear too. Sure, there will be challenges ahead of us. However, we strive toward the direction together and that makes a huge difference down the road. The first topic, uh, the, the power of forecasting. The power of forecasting equals decision. Operations management can be defined as a transformative process of inputs into output in the form of uh, products and services. That's what I learned uh, uh, in the introduction uh, uh, lecture. And uh, those cubic decision areas are defined as cubic quality process, inventory, and capacity. When making decisions, in the center of them lies forecasting. Managers and companies make decisions by gauging at the prospect of business and competitors in the future. Therefore, the power of forecasting equals decision because it serves the basis to make decisions for the constituents of the business. This is a fast food restaurant forecasting. What kind of strategy can you think from this distribution of customers? As you can see, there are customers from 11 to 2, but uh, there's downtime between 2 to 5, and then from 5, it picks up again, and at night, uh, it decreases. Based on this data, you can make staffing decisions such as hiring more servers or cooks between 1 and 3 and 5 and 8. You may want to consider giving out coupons between 2 to 5 so that you can attract more customers at this time. More ingredients and food supplies need to be stocked during less busy times. Here's another example of Feather, uh, FedEx call center forecast. What kind of strategy can you think of from the customer call center data? As you can see, it's more like a better shaped curve and the call center is getting busy between 11 to uh, 3. Of course, you can make a staffing decision. And another thing you can think about is outsourcing the function to Asia um, at the time of maybe 10 to 6, 6 a.m. You can outsource that because there are not many calls at the time. Or you can do that uh, with texting. In that way, you can lower the cost in running call center. So the point here is that you can uh, make many decisions based on this forecasting data. Another example that I want to take is Soda Stream Story. Uh, this example is from one student who took my course before 
in 2019, and uh, her uh, her name is Alexa Ragozino, and she shared this story with us. Uh, she, as a member of the sales operations team for Soda Stream, one of their company's biggest uh, pain was inadequate forecasting. It is truly unbelievable, according to her, that uh, uh, how incorrect forecasting can completely destroy many levels and departments within an organization. For um, those who are not familiar with the Soda Stream, the company is headquartered in Israel, and since all products are made and manufactured in Israel, the lead time after placing an order for a product to receiving the product in the United States warehouse is three months. The lead time is three months. A three month lead time is extremely long and does not allow for any delays or mistakes. During her time on the sales operations team, she was supporting the Walmart account. At the time, the national account director for the Walmart team was responsible for evaluating and entering the forecast for the account. One day, she received a call from the Walmart national account director that Walmart had decided to give the company an additional end cap placement in a few hundred stores. They were thrilled, discussing how much that would increase their numbers for the month. They were thrilled on, until the operations department were made aware of this major order. The sales team did not realize how such great news can really turn into a horrible forecasting situation for the entire organization. So this is another example that forecasting plays a major decision and make decisions for a company. When lead time is three months long, you know, it's a kind of hard for the company to have any flexibility. The second thing to cover in this lecture is forecasting concepts. In this section, we will define what forecasting is and learn major classifications of forecasting. First, forecasting decisions. Forecasting is defined as the art and science of predicting a future event. It's scientific as many advanced methods are utilized in forecasting. It is more importantly an art because there are so many models and methods available for forecasting, and it is essential the forecaster's responsibility to choose the right model and make decisions based on that. Remember that business forecasts are usually wrong. The task of business forecasting is to minimize the error. This leads us to the significance of telling what the forecasting errors are and we'll cover that later. Also remember that the longer the forecasting horizon is, the more inaccurate it is. For example, to predict tomorrow's forecast will be easier than to predict 10-year uh, forecast. Number might, be, uh, might not be all the aspects of forecasting. Managers and business professionals should also exercise their common sense, and incorporate expert knowledge to supplement the forecasting values. Types of forecasting Largely, forecasting can be divided into two categories, qualitative and quantitative forecasting. Qualitative forecasting includes discussion with experts and sales force and customer surveys or the like. These interviews and discussions give concrete ideas about the current circumstances and the future. Quantitative methods contain time series models or causal models. Usually forecasting involves time component and time series is an important method to learn. Causal models are used to investigate cause and effect relationships, such as an impact of promotion and other advertisement on sales. Here's the overview of quantitative approaches that we'll be learn, learning. In this course, um, we will learn naive approach, moving averages, exponential smoothing methods. 
Among others, let me briefly mention what naive approach is. It is to take the past values as the basis for forecasting. Suppose today's sales was $1,000. People using naive approach will think that tomorrow's sales will be also $1,000. That's a naive approach, which is not always right, but it can be powerful. Moving averages, exponential smoothing methods will be covered in the next section.